So we just got off the uh, Canucks Ford bus. So if you're trying to get around Jamaica, Canucks Ford bus system, transportation is the best way. How much it costs us for this? It's 2,500 to get from Kingston to, uh, damn, what's the name of this place called again? Dragsaw. Because a lot of the tickets to get from Ocho, from Kingston to Ocho Rios, they sell out quick. But you can get Drax, uh, to Drax Hall, which is not too far out of Ocho, and you have a taxi drive you the rest of the way. But it was good. Good bus. Typical commuter bus that we've been on in a lot of different cities and countries. Nice seat. Good as AC. They play a movie. They got Wi-Fi on the bus. And uh, this is actually a stop. But the final destination of the bus was going to Montego Bay. But we're about to be in Ocho Rios for a couple days. Uh, my homeboy Trevor uh, has a friend in the States that's Jamaican. And they have a relative here that, that came and pick us up. Nick, Miss Maxine. But overall, man, Kingston was good, man. We did a lot of things in Kingston. It, it almost feels like we have been here for a whole week already. But we only been here for about three, four days, and we still got a whole week left. So we about to head off to the next spot, go to our Airbnb in Ocho's, and then we, we connect back up, see what's good. We at the bus station here in Drax Hall. Spelled D R A X Hall H A L L. It's another small town right side of Ocho Rios. But yeah, Kingston was good, man. We did a lot. Our Airbnb hostess was great. Shout out to Kristen. She took us around for the nightlife. Uh, we saw the Bob Marley. I mean, we do, we we did a lot, man. Kingston is a place y'all definitely want to go to. It's a lot of culture. I feel like you can't really say you've been to Jamaica if you have not been to Kingston. Because Kingston, it's 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 a lot going on there. I know, but we about to go check out Montego, uh, not Montego Bay, Ocho Rios. I'm tired. We was out last night. We didn't go to bed till about three. Woke up early to get on the bus by 10 o'clock. Still haven't ate any breakfast. We having some issues with the Airbnb. Um, so originally we had an Airbnb for Ocho Rio, so y'all gotta be careful with this. So everybody out here, I'm gonna say in terms of everything I've heard about Jamaican and being in Jamaica, like it's 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 not really true. It's a, it's a lot safer than you think. I know a lot of people be concerned about safety, especially in Kingston. But one thing. Uh, there's always kind of really know what you're doing and what you're getting yourself into and make sure that everything is always trustworthy. So we booked up, we booked the Airbnb. We were trying to get as close to the center of Ocho Rios as possible. Now we booked an Airbnb and on the map, like if you, when you go to book your Airbnb, it shows a map of where the vicinity of where the Airbnb is. However, the Airbnb we originally booked said it was in Ocho Rios, but in the description it said it was in a neighborhood called Drax Hall Manor. Now we're not from Jamaica, so we thinking, oh, that's the name of the neighborhood in Ocho Rios. But once we booked the Airbnb and it comes a couple of days for us to go to Airbnb, the lady sends us the address and it's like 20 minutes outside of Ocho Rios. And so that was basically, it was it was false advertisement. So my homeboy, he hit up, uh, my boy Justin, he hit up the Airbnb help desk people. And uh, they agreed that it was false advertisement. So they refunded us our money and we found another Airbnb in the area that we want to be in for a cheaper price. So um, just be on the lookout for that. I mean, Sometimes I, you know, I've been, we've been traveling, going to different places, and I always feel like the same rules apply no matter where you go. Um, in terms of, you know, things to look out for here in Jamaica, you know, don't get in a taxi cab if you don't know how much it costs, you know, learn pretty quickly what's the relative, um, the relative uh, transfer rate of the money, so, 
you know, I know 5,000 uh, Jamaican dollars is about a little under $30. You know, 1,000 is about $6. 1,500 is about $10. So you kind of get a general idea of what you're paying for, you know. Um, what else? You know, I really didn't intentionally plan to, to blog, to, to vlog this. Um, but, you know, there's some things. I'm like, hey, you know, let me pull the camera out and do a little something. Maybe I put a, put together a little video. Um, you know, we even went to Trenchtown. We got a lot of footage in Trenchtown. I definitely was not prepared. My, uh, my GoPro memory card ran out of space. I, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't really fully committed to vlogging Jamaica. So I've been making do by a mixture of my phone, my GoPro. So... If y'all notice the, the film jumping and stuff like that, it being filmed on different cameras, that's why. But I, I figure I put a little something together. It's, it's a nice little hobby to do, you know, kind of to travel and, and, and record the experience and show other people. Obviously, I'm no high-end official uh, travel influencer or anything like that. But I think for the main thing, I like being able to look back on my experience and maybe someday show my kids this as well too and, and all my family members and so forth so but yeah I mean so far the trip to Jamaica has been going amazingly great real nice mom real nice as the Jamaicans say they say everything's real nice nice but um what else I almost didn't actually make this to this trip so I'll tell you a little story real quick so So, <laughs> so for this story, I almost didn't make this trip. By we were, so I had booked a plane ticket from. I had booked a plane ticket that had an overnight in two cities in North Carolina that were relatively close to one another. Now, I live in one of the cities that the overnight stay was in the city that I live in. And so what I figured when I bought the ticket that the original, the original, the, oh, we about to leave. So I, I'll tell y'all the story a little bit later, but um, yeah, we about to head off to the Airbnb. So I catch y'all later. Oh, I'll sit in the front. Yeah, man. Plus I, you know. It was so much we was doing in Kingston, moving, city, you know, city life, hustle and bustle. So I didn't even feel like walking around with a camera and trying to record everything all the time. It was so much stuff that was happening. I was like, man, this is awesome. But just being so into the experience, like we we're at the Bob Marley uh, Museum. We met, uh, I think, Bungo Herman. He was the percussionist of for Bob Marley, Gregory Isaac, Dennis Brown. Man, he gave me a nice little drum lesson, little Naya Bingy drum lesson. Uh, bought his CD. Uh, the Bob Marley Museum is nice. No videos or pictures in there, but uh, do we, uh, do we kind of like outside you can, you can, you can, you can. What if I was trying to go to? Jamaica, the, the level of hospitality here, you know, people talk about Jamaicans being rude. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, that is still facts. Now, I wouldn't even know if we call it rude or just the cultural way of how they, they communicate with one another. And then another thing too, they speak kind of low and very fast and cut up words. So it's something not, it's not necessarily patois, but it, it'd be hard to hear or understand or really catch what somebody's saying to you and they don't have any patience basically i wouldn't say they're rude they they don't have any patience and i find that to be similar in almost every major city uh panama city is like that uh any capital city i went to the people typically in most countries i've been to are not always the most patient with foreigners because depending on the major city, not all foreigners go to the major city. Like for example, here in Jamaica, not a lot of foreigners and 
vacationers go to Kingston, so they're not used to always interacting. But one thing I will say though is the hospitality. Um, you know, in terms of having a taxi driver kind of become your official taxi driver, that could easily be negotiated. Uh, you do a tour, people they they're going above and beyond uh, to really engage with you because tourism is a large part of the the GDP here. And we want some patties, either patties like some oxtail. I'm ready for the real. I'm ready for some real, bro. Like oxtails or patties or something, bro. I ain't trying to eat nothing. KFC is good, but I ain't trying to eat no nothing like that. But yeah, man, even the KFC here is way better than the KFC in the States, man. The KFC is falling off, but not here. It's good. Uh, they have this barbecue zinger sandwich uh, that is a barbecue crispy chicken sandwich. They got barbecue sauce on it. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. So, so I don't need no else on it. What are talking about right now? We was talking about checking out uh, Dunfalls and maybe the Blue Hole. Dunfalls? And the Blue Hole. Yeah, the only the only, the only, only thing we was trying to see is uh, the Dune Falls, the Blue Hole, and uh, the Bob Marley uh, Mausoleum. That was really, and then just hang out by the beach the rest of the time. And then maybe too, uh, See Marcus Garvey's house? Marcus Garvey's house is in St. Anne, right? Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it works. Marcus Garvey's house too, man. Y'all need to, y'all need to read up, read up on Marcus Garvey, or watch videos. They got documentaries. Shit, I'll link a documentary in the description of this video that I watch. And uh, huge activists, really the grandfather of the civil rights movement in the United States. They're not gonna teach you that. Uh, Bob, uh, not Bob. Martin Luther King even has acknowledged that Garvey inspired him to do his work. And then when you even listen to the live speeches of Marcus Garvey, you hear where Dr. King got his kind of cadence of speaking from. Uh, even Malcolm X, his father was a Garveyite. Uh, Fred Hampton also studied Garvey. And you may even hear the man Dr. Umar talk about Marcus Garvey as well too, a part of his Pan-African movement. But um, yeah, there would be no Malcolm, no Martin, no Fred Hampton without Marcus Garvey. So we got to go check his house out, his childhood home in St. Anne, St. Anne Parish or Parish St. Anne? Do you remember the, the name of the city? I know it's St. Anne. St. Anne is where he was born. So that's where we had to go check that out. I hope they take car, bro. I'm all out of cash. I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking about this whole transportation. Oh, oh yeah, bro. It's got everything costing us. US ATM inside. Yeah, that's yeah. where I am. Yeah, taking us. Well, shit. I guess this whole. Yeah, should be no. interesting. This is authentic shit that we talked about. We wanted to have. What what kind of food they got here? I, said, I don't know. We all let we all let Mexico. Oh, uh, scotchies. They say scotchies got they got the best patties. So we've been asking all the Jamaicans who got the best patties. Um, people say tasty, some say juicy, some say mothers. Her mothers had better cheese patties. Uh, so we're gonna check check this out. Now I'm definitely gonna record more while we in Ocho's because we're gonna be a little bit more chilling. You know, Kingston had us on the hustle and bustle. Um, man, I want the uh, the pig. I got a cold rap I want the I want that pig uh, pigtail barbecue. We had that. In Kingston, that was good. Pigtail barbecue. Um, but man, overall, man, Jamaica's nice. Jamaica's, Jamaica's real nice. It's sweet. 
I mean, I love all the mango trees. I mean, I'm in love, bro. I love my favorite fruit is mango. So to have all these mango trees providing us with nice shade and mangoes almost all year round is amazing. I'm gonna have to have me. I'm gonna have to move somewhere where I can have a mango tree for sure. Can I get uh, one fourth pound uh, jerk pork? One fourth, quarter pound. Quarter pound. Quarter pound is nothing. Oh, I'm not even that hungry. Yeah. No, you need more than one. Yeah. <laughs> it's one because something that likes something. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Listen to Miss Maxine. All right. Well, let me get a half pound of jerk pork. That sounds better. And <laughs> let me get the uh, rice and peas, the 200 one. Um. And uh, can I get a Pepsi? Like I did. Yeah. That's it. Oh, what do you want, Miss Maxine? Yeah. What, what you about to get? Shit, I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the chicken and I want I was gonna do the uh I had chicken last night. I mean, I think I'm gonna get the wings, bro. Honestly, I'm gonna the wings. Oh, it's, it's chicken, chicken, cuz I know, but I had gr grilled chicken last night. So they had a block party in front of our um, Airbnb last night, which on Sundays they got a lot of block parties in Kingston. If you're in Kingston. They got a block party. It's a uh, authentic dance hall. If you've seen the videos of the women jumping on the man and the men jumping on and doing all the craziness, you can see that there. We got there kind of late. We didn't see all that because we went to the dub club to hang out with some real Rasta man. But yeah, you got the Boom. It's called Boom. It's the Boom Dance Hall Block Party. I can't remember what the name is for the one. It's only cash. No, I don't want to use it. I the wrong card. Oh, uh, well. So there's a lot of things to do on Sunday. Even uh, they got a wine, a wine thing going on too on Sundays as well. Uh, it's more of a brunch wine. Fan I think it's called fine wine or fancy wine on Sundays. What's this? Um, how many does it come in? Just one? Yeah, one. And then can I have... Uh, small rice beans, two hundred. What what you get? What you get? Got that jerk pork. Get that last jerk pork. So you want one festival? Yes. Yeah. Drink or uh, no. Scotchies. They got the, that hog on there. They got a, some birds on there. They got ribs. They got they got a lot. Fellas, what y'all think of Jamaica so far, man? Jamaica's amazing, bro. Good food, good vibes. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie though, bro. I was speak your truth. Social media, social media, and I got us fucked up, bro. How? Divide and conquer techniques, you know, how motherfuckers be talking about us, diaspora wars going on, and you know what I'm saying? Jamaicans don't be fucking with us like that. I ain't experienced that shit, bro. It's been all love, bro. Yeah. Even exactly. when people hear our accents, bro, it ain't no disrespect. Exactly. I was low key kind of bracing myself for that shit, but I ain't. It's all love, bro. That yeah. shit don't exist. They might try They might try to get get over on you on some prices, but that's yeah. about it. I mean, yeah, we everywhere. coming from the States, you know, that's everywhere, you know. You coming from the States, you know. I'm not saying I'm not saying you have to tolerate it all the time, but you know, help them out, you know, don't be fighting over what's equivalent to a couple dollars for us, man. Just give it to them. But you know, at the same time don't let people take advantage of you. And that can happen anywhere, even in the United States. Even in the United States, you can have people take advantage of you. So um know your prices that's the only thing i'm gonna say know your price other than that all love one love one heart one mind it's, it's been good out here yeah man i'm just ready to chill by the beach honestly i can't wait to get on that beach i don't know about y'all and i think our, our 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 airbnb where we're staying is in a neighborhood and the neighborhood has a pool that we have access to so you know i'm gonna be chilling bro we're not doing tours or steaming it up, I'm gonna be chilling, man. For real. We gotta find a plug out here, though. So, bro, they got. I'm gonna pick personal level of patois. So, they don't say water out here. 
It's not water. It's water. Not water. So if you want a water, you gotta say water. And I'm probably still not pronouncing that wrong. They be they be they've been getting on me since I've been out here trying to learn a little bit of the patois. You want some hot sauce too? You want to the car? Uh -huh. So we at the uh, Jamaican St. Anne Parish Library. Uh, this is the hometown of Marcus Garvey. There's a statue here of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, national hero, born August 17th, 1887 and died June 10th, 1940. Sign says, we declare to the world, Africa must be free. So I know, I'll still be researching on Marcus Garvey, but, you know, he believed that the world couldn't completely unify until Africa was unified and the acknowledgement of the wrongs done in Africa. The last stone, the humble workman who built this wall in 1976 left a space at the top and asked that the last stone be laid when Africa became free. The freedom of Africa was an integral part of the vision exposed by Marcus Messiah Garvey. In 1994, the first multiracial election were held in South Africa and Nelson Mandela became president. The last stone was laid on August 17, 1994 by Nigerian High Commissioner to Jamaica, His Excellency, Professor Emmanuel Ugachukawa. Hope I pronounced that right, but yes, yeah, a lot of history in Jamaica as well too, not just beaches and weed and parties, it's a lot of history, roots and culture in Jamaica. So it's, it's cool to go to other places that had a black liberation struggle because then you get a chance to kind of see things from different vantage points how certain things were handled when it came to dealing with racism and colonialism and all the different kind of viewpoints on how they were able to approach those challenges uh, and Jamaica definitely has a unique one and the crazy thing is about Marcus Garvey is he's almost just as much as an American hero as he is a Jamaican hero because most of his work that he did was in the United States. Um, I mean, his Black Star ship line, um, the organizations that he started was all pretty much in the United States. So, like I said, a lot of the work that he was doing was in the United States. Like, one of the main organizations he started was the uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association which um, was basically for the advance plan of all people of African descent and it mainly started in the US and a little link between like him Bob Marley Rastafari is that Messiah Marcus Messiah Garvey had protested that if you're looking for a king look to the east which is in Ethiopia, where uh, one of the one of the original places where Christ Christianity was in Ethiopia a long time ago. There's even books in the Bible that were written out of Ethiopia that most of them have been removed. But and you can find some of those. I know one of them is like the Book of Enoch. I believe that was an Ethiopian text. But that king was Emperor Haile Selassie, who the Rastas revere as kind of this second coming to Christ in a kind of kingly fashion. Now, the kind of the controversy there is that Emperor Haile Selassie didn't necessarily have these same beliefs. And it's kind of deep to explain. I'll probably explain it a little bit later when I can sit down and really explain, at least as far as I know it. But that he came from a royal lineage, lineage of King Solomon and Queen Sheba and that he is a direct descendant of uh, King David. 
Now, when asked, he didn't necessarily uh, uh, believe that that was the case. I don't know how much he was actually involved in these movements, but he was seen as a figure to uh, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of Garveyites, and quite frankly, a lot of people around the world of all races. He was revered and respected. Now, but yeah, even so, uh, Ethiopia was one of the only countries that was not colonialized. And that's also because of Emperor Haile Selassie and his leadership. Again, from what I hear, Marcus Garvey was sometimes a little bit critiquing of his leadership, but they were attempted to be evaded by Italy. Italy was Mussolini was unsuccessful, and that's another reason why Ethiopia and Emperor Haile Selassie is revered to such high a guard because they were one of the only African nations to ward off colonialism. And um, what? Else? And because of that, a lot of Americans during the time that Marcus Garvey was in the United States were aware of Ethiopia and what was going on in the diaspora because of Marcus Garvey. Because Marcus Garvey, a large part of his life before he moved to the United States, was basically like a journalist going around learning and listening to the conditions of black people in many different countries. And he was an avid reader. Here in Jamaica, they say that the worst mistake that Jamaica made was educating Marcus Garvey. And part of that is because he was so educated and, and know a lot about the, knew a lot about the world and how other black people and people of African descent were living across the diaspora, he was trying to kind of unify this like one advancement of all these people who have been suffering from slavery and Jim Crow and apartheid and racism and color and all these different things. And so, you know, he created his organizations and the Black Star to kind of help with the alleviation of that. And all of that was done in the United States. And during the time that Italy was being, was trying to evade Ethiopia through Marcus Garvey and the Garveyites, they were aware of this struggle. And he had motivated a few thousand black Americans that enlisted to go to Ethiopia to help fight the Italians in Ethiopia. Now, I believe to my understanding, all that fell through. Nobody actually went to Ethiopia to help fight, but people were conscious back then of what was happening and their attachment and their willingness to protect Africa, to see the value in having a free Africa. And thus is why the freedom of Africa is a huge thing because in his eyes, if Africa is free, that will help strengthen and allow all people of the diaspora to leverage Africa's freedom and strength and credibility in the world beyond what it's known for on a surface level, that they could use that power and strength and resources to alleviate the entire diaspora. So in a kind of fictional world of like Black Panther that was kind of the whole premise of the first movement about um, wanting to wanting to have all these uh, that have the vibranium used across the world to help everybody uh, especially black people that was Killmonger's whole motive but yeah we out here in St. Parish St. Anne Parish Jamaica it's pretty good so we about to go over to his house now Again, so we got our driver, Miss um, Maxine, and she's taking us to this library and taking us to see things. Fifteen dollars a day to each of us, and now we're going inside this library to check it out. Hi. It is hurricane season. So this is the, the downtime in Jamaica because it's hurricane season. Still tourists here, but because it's our summer, so a lot of people taking vacations. Oh yeah, we gotta go up there and check. Check it out. Ford Maddox, the good soldier. Ooh, here, here go a classic right here. Who moved my cheese? 
a story about adaptability. Be adaptive so that you can always get some cheese. It's a great book. Now we, we about to go upstairs to the, to the Marcus Garvey Center and check that out. Marcus Garvey Center here in St. Anne Parish, Jamaica. Place of Marcus Garvey. This is his house that he was born in. Huh? So this is this is the things that we like to do too when traveling you know don't get me wrong we do all the typical stuff but I like to learn a little bit on the way you know now I saw a report in the news that I saw a report in the news that Marcus Garvey they want I think the Something's going on with this house right now where I think they want to remove it or remodel it or turn it into a museum. And they offered, I believe, the family members, this three sisters, uh, they built like a house for them, the government did. But there's been some discrepancies going back and forth about the house. So I'm not quite sure on that. But yeah, this is Marcus Garvey's house, man. What y'all think, fellas? Did y'all did y'all know about Marcus Garvey before y'all came before? Of course, man. Yeah, yes. yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we learning a whole lot more though. So this this is where he was born. It's kind of surreal to be right here where he was born all these all this, these odd uh, years ago. Yeah, and everything's still kind of in intact. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hum, man humble, hum, humble beginnings. Man, the people. Man. It's just to show you, it's not where you start, but where you end up. You know what I'm saying? So, these is uh, the history that they don't teach us in the uh, states, man. That's probably much needed for sure. Cause Garvey's house, man. What y'all think, fellas? Historic. Yeah, bro. Crazy. Did y'all know about Marcus Garvey before y'all came? Before? Of course, man. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we learned a whole lot more, though. So this this is where he was born. Kind of surreal just to be right here where he was born all these, all the, these uh, years ago. Yeah. And everything's still kind of in intact. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hum, man. Humble, hum, humble beginnings. Man, it's just to show you it's not where you start, but where you end up. You know what I'm saying? So, these is uh, the history that they don't teach us in the uh, states, man. That's probably much needed. For sure. the people yeah as a whole. Yeah. See, it was not until Edward Siaga yeah. went and got his body from England and right. brought it back, they placed that plaque right there. Okay. That's when they recognize that Harvey is a national hero and yeah. an international icon when it comes to yeah. the struggle of black people. Yeah. Right. So. It was just in 1887 that they recognized that? In mm -hmm. 1987? Yes, but yes, in that time. Really? Yes. They never used to teach nothing about Garvey in schools mm. in Jamaica, you know. They never used to talk. They taught nothing about Garvey. But remember, all right, Michael Mann taught Norman Washington Marley. You're Jamaica, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, now I'm in Washington, man. And Garvey found a party called the PPP, People's Political Party. Right. right. Yeah. right. So Garvey went to jail yeah. in Jamaica here. And when he was in jail, finally dropped the P in the middle and put an N and, and called it PMP. So he wiped Garvey out of history right there. So that's when Garvey. You Wait know, you know that history happened to say Garvey is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Garvey is still alive. He, because locked, he locked that prison gate in Spanish town. And right, said, I say. What when was he, the name of the other man? Uh, uh, he, he said, whenever time he comes back to Jamaica, yeah. whenever time he had been seen again, only that man able to recognize him. Okay. okay. Yeah, I know well, about that. Yeah. I, I don't think Garvey is alive in the physical place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But physical Garvey is alive. Place. Yeah. In the spiritual and yeah. in I and I, yeah. because yeah. we are we are bringing forth the, the struggle, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because Garvey really came yeah. to America to see Booker T. Yeah. If you read the history of Garvey, yeah, because Garvey wanted educated black people, because he wanted to build a nation to represent I and I. You know, see, because he was like, we I mean, look and look, the European get rep um, represented all over the world. We as black people they don't get represented. So we wanted a nation to represent I and I. Yeah. This is what I said. So Garvey, that's what Garvey was about. Yeah. But he ran into WD the boss. A little trouble. And the boss, yeah. he wanted to be integrated. And um, they, you know, and you know how the little um prejudice goes with West Indian, come to America, yeah, think yeah. you run shit, yeah, and all that. Cause I've been there, you know. Yeah. I live in the Bronx for thirty something years. Okay. I can hear 30. it. Yeah. I yeah. can hear it a little bit. I can hear the Bronx just a little bit. Yeah. yeah so I, you know, I've been to it. You know yeah. what I'm saying, bro? So no one come. And my, my, my brothers, they came and they, they started accepting me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, Yo, Ross. Boom, boom. You know. We won. Yeah. Only thing the ship stopped in in, in, in West Indies before they went to uh, America. Mm -hmm. But we came on the same ship across that line. Yeah. See, so. Yeah, man. I swear it's my birthday. Yeah, one nice. Love, Peace you know? and love. Yeah, one love. Yeah. Boss man. Y'all know, man. Yeah, boss man. What's your name, man? We Keith. didn't care. Keith. Keith? Yes. Yes, nice to meet you, Keith. Yeah, man. I'm yeah. So this is called. Guinness. 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 Yeah. It's a fruit. It is a fruit. So we can eat it. How do you, how do you eat it? Crack it. Yeah. Okay, so let me demonstrate again. Oh, I think it's like chewy inside, like gooey, right? Mm. Yeah. Watch me. Yeah. It's like a what you call it? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had one. these. Yeah. Oh Talk yeah. Fresh off the troll, you yeah, we had these in Panama. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know a lot of Panamanians up in 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 the Bronx. Cologne. Oh yeah. Alright. Cologne, yeah, Cologne yeah. man. Alright. Cologne man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Rio Rajo. Rio Rajo and, and Bocas de Toro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we was always Panamanian. Tight. Uh, Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Good vibes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's good, man. Thank you, Keith. Hey, man. Uh, our fruits go. Fruits for a while. We can harvest much. Go to the apple tree, get some apple tree. Get some bread fruit, grow some bread fruit. Mm. Avocado tree, that's right. Avocado right there. Mm. Avocado is here, that's avocado right there. Mango is right there. Mm. Mm. I love mango. Yeah. The finger looking leaf tree, that's a breadfruit. Yeah. We roast it, we bake it, we fry it. Yeah. Yeah. So the breadfruit, it tastes like bread. 
But when we roast it and we peel it and slice it in pieces, yeah. eat it with the ackee. The ackee is our national fruit. I still gotta have yeah, ackee. I, I gotta have ackee and sawfish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had it yet. How long does it take for these trees to grow? It's years, right? Yeah, it all depends, you know, because I have an ackee tree there. Yes. And I just went to the garden in 2012. 2012 and it'd be about four cups already. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's always bearing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the soil. Everybody's on the soil. Mm -hmm. It's, it's called like soil. mango. On the south coast, mango coming quicker. Mm -hmm. Because it's almost carbon. Mm -hmm. But here it takes a longer time for the carbon capture. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Now come with the mango. <laughs> yeah. oh, mango is yeah, going. Man, it's, going. <laughs> it's going. It's going now. This year, mango be enough to serve. Yeah, man. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Mango season over. Mango season over. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. over. This is some mangoes, but not as much as what you could see. Like about this in last month. But in this, in this area, no. Yeah, we have mango, man, because because all trees be in a resort. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's hard to really hold on to money. That's the thing that happened. Because Africa was real around so long. You know what I'm saying? We know civilization from Egyptian days. Give me a second. Yeah, please, 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 please. People was coming to Africa from all over the world just yeah. to learn. So, yeah. so we are more tolerant of people. Mm -hmm. And that's why North Africa is the way it is today. And they try to write us out of history mm -hmm. of North Africa. Yeah, like um the speech for Emperor Haile Selassie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. yeah, we went yesterday to the dub club. We was with the Rastas. Yeah, man. Yeah. Until the philosophy, which holds one race superior yes. and another inferior. Bob Marley song a song. Yeah, war, war, yeah. yeah. But that was a speech given to the uh, League of Nations yeah. by His Majesty. Yeah. yeah. But, um, if you notice, um, the Romans, the Romans, they were searching for Ethiopia. Yeah. Which is in the book, if you, if you read it in, in, in the Bible, they talk about put. That's, mm -hmm. that's, they talk about Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm so what happened now? You see, Ethiopia, they conquered Egypt, mm -hmm. but they were told there's a greater civilization up the river. Yeah. So the Romans went looking for it. They mm -hmm. couldn't find it because guess what? Ethiopia is built on a high. Mm -hmm. So you see, when the clouds come, it covers it. Because if you go to Ethiopia, the plateau. It's on a highland. Mm -hmm. you see? It was not until in you know, the 1800s that Italians them found Ethiopia mm -hmm. and they were defeated. Mm -hmm. You understand know what I'm saying? By um, Memelik. Memelik, I think Memelik II or whatever. Yeah. They defeated the Italians, threw them out of there. Yeah. But Ethiopia is one of the countries in Africa that was never subjugated you know, by Europeans. You know? yeah. And when World War II came around, that guy, um, Mussolini. Yeah, Mussolini. He went to uh, Africa. And he fell. Well, he, yeah, he, he failed, but yeah. His Majesty had, had to leave. Yeah, And exile. he went to England, and that's when he started making his speech, trying to get help. And he was telling them, well, today is for me, tomorrow, and what happened? The Germans start bombing the hell out of everything in Europe. Because so he, prophesied, he prophesied World War II. He told them, that's what's going to happen. If y'all don't help me now, that's what's going to happen. And that's you know World War Two happened. Mm -hmm. So he tried to stop him. Yeah, he was trying to try and tell him, say, help me, man, stop these Italian guys because of the, the mentality that they came with. So because they remember they are carrying feelings, you know, mm -hmm. because we were like one of the first African nation to build, beat a European nation in on the battle. Yeah, and that's why you, you know about Haiti, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why they did Haiti, but they did Haiti. Why mm -hmm. Haiti still how Haiti is now? Right, because long black man them throw them out. Mm -hmm. 
บอร์ทุซานนั่นบุกมาเลยเฮ้ยโอเคได้เลยนะไม่รู้มอสเลฟกันเลยเนี่ยนี่นะอย่างนี้ใช่โซอเมริกาฟลอดเดอร์เรคอนส์เรเวนซี่ก็ไฟเลยเนี่ยทราจิกนะเพราะฉะนั้นคนทุกคนต้องรู้การ์วิสเย่เพราะฉะนั้นเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเด็กอ่ะเ
Yeah, so it's, it's, it's great. It's great. Feels great. Feels good. Yeah. Well, yeah, man. Thanks for the overstanding, man. Come on, brother. Man. <laughs> Share yeah, share the knowledge. Yes. Yes. One love, one nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bless up, bless him. See you, man. Take care. Alright. Are you ready? Yeah. You're a wild Ocean Village Park. They got the theater, the tours, gift shop. Oh yeah. We also gotta go to Jakana. We doing the cannabis farm tour tomorrow, so we could probably go ahead and pay for it right now. Y'all wanna go ahead and uh, pay for it? Yeah, I get more for the year. Hey. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Before. Before we do that, man, we 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 have the tour tomorrow. The we the cannabis tour. They told us to come here to pay. And check in. Can we do that now? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're all set. I spoke to um, I forgot her name on the phone, but she told. Yeah, she told me to come here okay. to pay. We'll get her for you. Yeah. So I tell y'all this, man. Since we've been in Jamaica, they really okay, love some '90s R and B slow jams. Of the blue muffin. So, so that's a string. So yeah. that's the blueberry muffin. We are in the indica section. Yeah. So for we have like for each range we have different strains. So yeah. joy is the sativa dominant line. Yeah. Peace is the indica dominant and passion is the hybrid. Yeah. And for non smokers who just want to be on the medical side of it, as well as THC, we have the CBD. Nice. And on this side we have the original flower. Yeah. Fused with the shrooms, and for this line, we have the honey, we also nice. have the chocolates, and we also have gummies, and we have the capsules. Nice, nice. And our accessories. And if you do ash and keep, we have ash as well. Currently, we're also keep, but we do have hash. Okay. Yes. How much is the uh, the pack? The six pack? Yeah. That one's for $50. So basically, okay. you're paying for five, and you get one free. Oh, nice. Yeah. Fifty dollars for uh one two six six three rolls. So she said, "This is the sativa, this is the indica, and that is the hybrid." No, no, you can get the flower. That Margaritaville is somewhere down here. You want to take a walk down? Yeah, sure, yeah. Come, you want to? Come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 
So here's uh, Margaritaville and they have a private beach so you know Ocho Rios, Montego Bay many of the beaches are, are private so I believe you do have to pay for a spot on the beach but uh, the water looks nice they have water sports here so if you do pay for the beach here you do have some activities that you could do out in the water we definitely gonna be getting in later man it's been hot in Jamaica it's been hot in Jamaica and uh, now on being at Ocho Rios you get a little bit of that ocean breeze we have the official Starbucks no tourist destination is complete until it has a Starbucks so people can stay caffeinated and in the vibes oh man what I need is a massage we have been walking for like four days straight my feet my ankles my knees everything's hurt so if I get a nice foot roll, foot roll I would love that but yeah we're out here in Ocho Rios this is their uh, main center. Yeah, so we out here in Island Village. The main center in Ochi. In Ochi, as the Jamaicans call it, Ochi. Or Ocho Rios. So it's slow season, but this is where the uh, cruise ships dock at to let people off. But we're in, we're in slow season. And so you get more of the local vibe because it's summer vacation for the kids. So a lot of the parents and kids are out and about doing typical stuff. So, um, but uh, yeah, man, we're about to go ahead and check into our Airbnb. I was telling you a little earlier, we had a mishap with the Airbnb on Ocho Rios, but we got it straightened out. We just paid for the tour for the weed farm. I look forward to that tomorrow. But I think what we're about to go do is just take it easy, cool off the rest of the night, maybe find some food, the grocery store, and just relax and uh, start Ochi off right tomorrow with a tour in the morning. So we out, man. With one, with God's dearest blessings, I leave you for a while. One love. Marcus, Multaya. <laughs> <laughs>